Saturday the 5th of November 2022 and it's Bridgewater Carnival Day, we're preparing to get the car out of the shed, I've just popped down with the tractor to get some fuel and we should then be set ready to get the car out and do the carnival. I get back down to the car and everybody is putting the last minute touches on ready to pull out. We also put the generator on and just test the electrics just to make sure everything is working as we want it to but unfortunately we do have some generator issues and some lighting issues so we end up being about an hour late pulling out than we wanted to as you can see a lot of them seem quite stressed right now they really want this to work and a lot of them have been up all night working on the car this day is such a mix of emotions for many carnivalites and sometimes delirium sets in Finally, we think it's sorted and we prepared to get the car out of the shed and down to the lineup at Parkway. The shed we build in is down quite a narrow lane, so we need to take the cart down in three pieces. The tug, which is at the front, or the tractor unit if you like, goes first on its own. My dad is a recently retired HGV mechanic and has always looked after the tractor unit for Vagabonds and converted it when they first bought it. He likes to be the one to take it out of the shed and down Parkway on its first outing of the year, just to make sure everything's mechanically sound. This year, it seems even more important that he takes it out, as it's the first time since 2019 that the cart has been out of the shed because of COVID. The lorry was first built in 1990. It's a Reg Iveco 2838. The tractor unit was originally bought for the Carnival Club in 1998 and was converted over that year to be used in Carnival 1999. I then jump into the tractor and back up to the first trailer inside the shed. This is the section that we generally refer to as a cart when we're trying to distinguish between the three sections. Although when all three parts are hitched up together, we also call that the Carnival Cart. I guess this is because it's the main section, it's the biggest and the longest. It's a bit that at one time would have been the only part that would have been decorated and been built on. But as Carnival has evolved, clubs have decorated their tug and their generator trailer. I get watched back, hitched up, and then it's time to pull the car out of the shed. Very slowly and carefully, with help from the club members watching me out. This is something that cannot be rushed. The car itself is 11 foot wide, 16 foot high. And when fully trained, it's a hundred foot long. I get watched all the way down the lane and branches are moved if necessary. A lot of people have put so much time and effort into building this cart, so we must be very careful with it. As you can see, there's not much room down either side. And as you can imagine, light bulbs and hedges and branches really do not mix. I get out of the lane and down the road to where dad is with the tug. Once I get to the end of the lane, I will unhitch and leave the trailer there for dad to back up to, hitch up, and be ready to pull it down to Parkway, the official waiting area for procession. While they are doing that, I will head back to the shed and pick up the second trailer, or as we call it, the generator trailer. And as you can guess, this is a trailer that carries a generator. When I return, they're waiting for me, ready to hitch up and go. They give me the signal and I slowly start pulling out until... Thank you. 
say that? Oh, someone forgot to take the pipe off that lets the exhaust fumes out of the shed. Now that little incident is sorted, it's time to get her down the lane. We are now ready to go to Parkway, where the official lineup is for procession. One of the marshalling team will let us know when it's safe to take it down. When travelling on live public roads, we must stay in two sections and have an escort vehicle front and back. We are not allowed to hitch the generator trailer on until we are in the procession lineup and we have weighed in. We are not too far away and it doesn't take us long to get there. This is the moment that other clubs and carnival lovers wait with anticipation to see other people's carts. There is a bar at the top of Parkway where we turn in with the carts, where a lot of people stand and have a drink and discuss what they think of the carts in the daylight. As most carnivalites know, what a cart looks like in the daytime could be totally different to what it looks like in the evening when the carnival is in procession. The lights, moving parts and personnel can make a huge difference to how the carts look coming down the road. Finally, it is our turn to turn in. We are a little bit later than normal and a lot of people have started dispersing to go and get ready to be on the cart themselves. Which is a little less nerve wracking for us, driving it down through. We then get down to the VSO tech team. The VSO or Vehicle Special Order sets out weights, measurements and safety standards that all clubs must adhere to for their carnival carts. Here we are driving onto weighing plates to get our final weight. We can be no more than 50 tonnes. Along with this we will get measured and we also have free inspections throughout the year at different stages of the cart build. Once they are happy with us we can pull up and get the generator trailer hitched up to the cart. When all three sections of the cart are together we call this fully trained and at this point we are ready for procession. Uh, 
I get the signal and I begin to pull on up, ready to hitch up. I did forget to film this part. But basically what happens is I pull the tractor as close as I can possibly pull it up to the cart, but also able to get out. We then drop the hitch on the back of the tractor and I manoeuvre out from between the cart and the generator trailer. Dad will then back the cart up with the tug to the generator trailer and onto the hitch. Because of the nature of the cart and limited visibility, we must make sure that we are in a straight line and the cart is backed up as straight as we possibly can. When driving a carnival cart, you really rely on your road crew as your eyes and ears. It's a team effort. And communication between the team is the key to our position and success. The carts line up on Parkway and as they get to Bath Road, they turn left and the procession starts. They head all the way down Bath Road, left at the Cross Rifles roundabout, down Mount Street, Broadway, and then turn right at Morrison's traffic lights. This is where it starts to get a little bit narrow, over the mini roundabout, up past Weatherspoons, and this is where it gets really difficult. You need to keep to the left to get round the right hand bend, but not too much so that you can't get round the left hand hairpin around Cornhill, which you must stay to the right for. This is a one way street, so as you can imagine, there is no room for error. We head up through the town and take a right at the roundabout by the old cinema, where bollards are taken out to make it easier for us to get round. Then a right handed corner at Mount Street, which is our last big corner, and up through Mount Street and Northgate to the end of procession. At the end of the procession, we follow the road up through the clink and turn left at the lights into East Quay where the road is closed for the carts to wait, ready to be split down. This is where we can get the cart personnel off and ensure that we have all the support vehicles ready to split down and take it over to the next carnival. We then get a police escort up to junction 23, where there is space for us to split down back into two sections and then we can transport the cart over to Burnham-on-Sea. And that's it, we're ready to go. Dad has expressed his concerns about the clutch. It seems to be very stiff as he pulled down Parkway. We decide it's good enough to nurse it round and I get my costume on and we get going to have some fun. This is the moment we've all been waiting for for so long. Just as we turn the corner at Morrison's, we have a small hold up to wait for an ambulance to come through. With so many people in one place, it is likely for something like this to happen. So we are always prepared for the possibility. Once we get the signal from the road crew all the way down the sides of the cart that it's safe to move, we can carry on.
Then just as we enter the hairpin at Cornhill, I can't get any movement from the truck. I have been pumping the clutch to gain pressure all the way round, but all of a sudden I can't get any pressure and the air has dropped considerably. Because of this, it is refusing to go into gear. The cart personnel were told that we may have clutch problems and the ride wouldn't be as smooth as normal. Although up until now, I had held it together pretty well. As you can see, the personnel at the front have noticed that there is something that is not quite right. It is a heart sinking feeling that only carnivalites will ever understand. Spending all year building a car and not getting it around Bridgewater Carnival is something no club wants to go through. The marshals had given us five minutes before they went and called a wrecker. Wreckers are always on hand at carnivals just in case a cart does break down. I am desperately trying to bring the air up and get enough pressure in the clutch to move forwards. And just when it feels like all hope is lost, it starts to move and the relief is unreal. One of the best feelings as you go round is seeing the club members and supporters out watching and cheering. A lot of these people have put time and effort in throughout the year to making this cart happen. Although a lot of the club members love being part of the parade and on the cart, dancing their hearts out, others prefer to be part of the build and watch it coming down the road. Others may have a young family and want to watch the joy on their children's faces as the cart comes down the road. We also have some life members in their 60s, 70s and 80s that feel like it is too much for them to go on cart. These are the people with the knowledge and experience to guide us through every single year. We finally reach the end of procession and we can get the club members off. We have a little discussion about what to do with the cart because of the clutch problems. <laughs> do you want to swap over? You sure? I'll go back and get the track then. What is going to be the plan? Are we going to take the whole thing over to Werner? I think so. We can't do much else, really, can we? Uh, hey? take it in any other way can we? No, not really. Is he about the same or did it get worse or? Well that bit on the Cornell, I felt something go, but I don't know, maybe it's up at a gear where all the folks come yeah. down. Did he get harder? Because I noticed the air pressure was down a bit. He's, no, he's assisted harder. by air. Just, when I was going like bringing the clutch up, whereas before it was just I bring the clutch up and it would go. Yeah. Still going over there. Yeah, I'm going to try and 
We split down, which I forgot to film, as I think we had other things on our mind at the time. Plus, I am new to this video documentation, so I don't really know which bits to film that people will find interesting. So what I am pulling now is the cart trailer with the tug. Dad is in the tractor behind me, pulling the generator trailer. We both have a support vehicle front and back of us to stop the traffic if needed. So there are four support vehicles in total to move the cart. Moving the cart between carnivals is a different challenge altogether. It's very cold and dark and takes a huge amount of concentration. We reach the entrance to the lineup and a chap comes over to ask where the tracker is. They put trackers on us between each carnival to make sure that we are within the speed limit. We are then allowed to proceed to the lineup. This is where we will hitch the cart up together, ready to go on Monday. However, we are also going to unhitch the tug at this point because we are going to take it into a workshop to see what is wrong with the clutch. We hitch up the generator trailer to the car and then we unhitch the tug and leave it until the morning. I hope this has given you a little insight into what happens behind the scenes. I thank you very much for watching.